Hello guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to carve tooth number one one, that is right maxillary central incisor. Basic one, you have to mark the length of the crown and the length of the root, and all sides, that is aspects of the tooth that is labial, palatal, nasal and distal. Nasal, you should be able to identify the nasal and distal sides of the tooth as this is a right maxillary settle incisor so the nasal aspects aspect come on the right side of the tooth and distal aspect on the left side. Now draw a midline on labial and palatal side. Make two slanting lines on the crown. Similarly on the palatal side and join them on the incisal surface. So you get the major distal length and you have to remove the excess. While re removing the excess, you should use both the sides of the carver that is sharp end and the blunt end. From the blunt end you can smooth the surface of the tooth and from the sharp end you can carve up to the depth you should hold the carver in the modified plane grip as i am holding in this tree so carve accordingly Carve 1 mm more, 1 mm less according to the markings we have made on the crown or root so that it should not get shrinked or it should not be so small or it, uh, it may not be get approved from your mentors. Now carving nasal and distal side. From mesial side, the crown looks wedge shaped. So we have to draw a wedge shaped crown on mesial side. Draw a midline also on the incisor surface. So the convex uh, convex surface is on the labial side and. Uh, At the incisal region, the crown is convex, concave, sorry, and uh, on the in the cervical region, the crown is convex. So, as I told, use the blunt end of the carver. or any uh, surface of the tooth smooth on the labial surface the height of contour that is the highest point on the uh, or the convexity lies in the middle one third or the 
junction of medial one third and the cervical one third of the crown. In the lingual, uh, on the lingual side, as we know, there is a fossa, and on the lingual slide uh, side, the crown is slightly small. The mesial distal length of the crown compared to the labial and palatal side, palatal side is small. Carb uh, the fossa only in the incisor and the middle one third, so that your cingulum should not get cut off. to make marginal ridges they are necessary as you see i am making palatal side small than the labial side so you can able to see the mesial and distal aspect from the palatal side of the tooth now making a fossa on the maxillary central incisor fossa is w shaped so keeping marginal ridges prominent carve the fossa remove the ex extra wax marginal ridges are those which bound the fossa from medial and distal side so there are two ridges that is medial marginal ridge and the distal marginal ridge fossa is carved more finishing to the crown now basic anatomy to identify the central incisor that is the medio incisor angle is sharper and the disto incisor angle of the tooth is a blunt that is rounded by this you can identify the left and right side of central maxillary like central incisor So 
the basic model of crown is finished now we have to cast the root root is actually easier just we have to remove the extra wax Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe and hit the like button. Thank you.